Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we conclude the module, the second module of classification and connections and the traditional roots uh, to understand the relevance of the art practice in the last part of our discussion. Uh, so far we have been discussing in uh, the mode of uh, something which is similar to a literature survey that we try to uh, read the uh, literature sources, the quotations of the visionaries and through which we are trying to formulate our own opinion uh, for this context. Uh, right now, I am going to simply jot down the statements uh, and also understand the identities of the visionaries whom I discussed uh, throughout. So, this is more like uh, concluding the thing by revising it uh, to understand the relevance of the practice. For a long time, the folk aesthetics have confronted doubts whether the paintings are worth of any serious discourse. But eventually, with the endorsement of nationalism, context of folk art drew thoughtful attention as a newly found alternative aesthetics. W. G. Archer found the tradition to be of some importance due to its primitive connection in the light of the pioneering Amagrad movement in the Europe, Ananda K. Kumarswamy and E. B. Havel's study between the years 1909 to 1935 on Indian art practice outside the mainstream Mughal court paintings placed the regional art forms on a higher pedestal. They opined on the potential of folk paintings to contribute in the rise of modern Indian art under nationalistic spirit. E. B. Havel noticed the tradition as a turning point to revive indigenous style of visual expression. Abhinindranath Tagore, Nandalal Bose and other nationalists from Bengal school commented over and explored the possibility of including the style and aesthetics, aesthetic principles of folk painting in their works. Parthamitra, Debashish Banerjee and R. Shivakumar are amongst the writers to assess the significance of these experiments in their recent writings. Nandalal Bose, an artist, art educationist, nationalist believed the idea of limitless and free creativity as well as he believed that the creativity should be bound to its history and cultural heritage. He experimented this ideology in his life through his art practice. He took folk aesthetics as a tool to shape indigenous art. In February 1938 at Haripura Congress, Bardoli, Gujarat, Nandalal Bose sent an exemplary demonstration of environmental art project using local material artistry. He painted paintings depicting Indian daily life scenes framed as Haripura posters that was extremely secular in nature. It followed a work process close to the community folk art practice where a master painter leads the production in a team. He used a style of Patachitra for this series of painting like folk painters. He used locally available art colors. His application of colors and use of bold and long brush strokes reminded us of the folk and urban Patachitra of Bengal. His indigenous method and subjects of paintings greatly influenced by folk art helped people to realize and understand the national value. 
what was Mahatma Gandhi's aim in this gathering. Folk art through diverse in their style but share common subject matters or themes. The subject matters or themes of the paintings are either mythological, religious which deal with Indian ethos or contemporary social issues. In colonial and post-independent India, by the urge of nationalism, few activities initiated a revival of indigenous art. During this time, the revivalist scholars realized the importance of folk art that was regional, religious and vernacular in nature. The realization of the relevance of the art practice uh, in the form of folk and minor art in the context of Indian art uh, became a crucial point for its researchers, although it is not widely spread it and there are many confusions about uh, the practice. For many, these are the modes of entertainments of a time uh, that has gone long back and it may not have uh, any significance in today's context because the mode of entertainment has changed, the paradigms are long been shifted. But what our takeaways from this research is greater than that. It is important to realize at this point, at this juncture that the importance of self-expression through the mode of art of any kind, a nation has to be as original as possible only to gain confidence. It gives us strength to realize that we have a cultural heritage of our own. So, uh, when we have become independent politically uh, for more than 60 years now, it still holds certain significance though the immediacy is much lesser. Uh, but this is very important to realize how the artists of modern India namely Ravi Verma or Amrita Shergil, they wanted to create something which is of our own. At the same time, they borrowed a large amount of uh, technical guidance and education from the Europe, made something of a great significance, but there had been painters uh, who also instead of only taking up the subject matters or the themes which are Indian, they tried to uh, get into a synergic relationship with the traditional folk painters of that time. Even now, when we look at contemporary art uh, in India, which is known to be Indian art, we see that uh, there are exchanges of ideas with the contemporary painters and the village painters or folk or minor art practitioners who are the painters uh, for whom art is part of their habitual being, it is part of their life and customs and rituals. Unlike the academic painters who are uh, trained into the academic norms which is largely European and uh, also nationalist uh, to some extent. Uh, but they were, they had a different types of awareness that they enjoyed uh, as part of their education. Whereas there is a parallel stream that goes on, it is like a parallel education which has no conflict as such, but the only thing is there is no uh, possible exchanges unless the initiatives were made by people. So, uh, in our next module, we are going to focus on those aspects, how we contextualize this kind of a topic, 
how we decontextualize them and see them in a independent and open light. Also, the concept of the uh, communication and its the, the possibilities of communication to serve some social purpose, the aesthetic perspective of it, the secularity and religious plurality that is connected to it, the ethnographic perspective on the study of folk art and culture and about the exponents who brought the culture under the limelight. <laughs>